slip leads, prong collars and e-collars. Hope you enjoy. So yes, there's, you know, different ways of training your dog. Um, like I said, there's all different types of dogs. Um, and these are really for the dogs that are, it's what people would say, untrainable, or dogs that don't respond to normal lead work or anything like that. Now, if you get a dog as a puppy, should be easy to train, start off with puppy training, train it up through, lead work and everything else, you don't have a problem. But what's happened, especially, I mean, even when I was in my 20s and 30s, there was rescue dogs. In my 30s, I had rescue Dobermans, and, um, you know, they came with all different problems. They were rescue Dobermans because people couldn't do anything with them. And then I, I got hold of them and I could, I could train them and, uh, you know, make them fine. But some of those dogs had their own traits and you, once it's in them and when, once they're two, three years old, it's very difficult to get that trait out of them. You can train them, but they'll always have those different traits. Um, so these, when you're a, a dog trainer, you use every help you can get. Now, most, most um, training work I do with my dogs is with the slip lead. This goes over the neck like that, and you can have it high, high on the neck like that to train it. Or generally, you have it loose like that, and when they're good, it's loose. It's like them having nothing on. Fine. But when they're naughty, you go like that, it pulls in, and you've got control. And then you slacken off, it slackens off. Pull, slacken off. Pull, slacken off. Absolutely brilliant. For 90% of your dogs, brilliant thing for using. A, a, a little word here, harnesses. Absolute waste of time. If you've got a little dog, whatever, a chihuahua, um, probably up to um, um, little uh, border terriers and things like that, harnesses if you want. But your poor dog having this flipping thing around its waist all the time, and if you're trying to train, train it, especially when you get to these sort of dogs or bigger, they're a waste of time. They put all the power in the chest of the dog and really you won't get anywhere with them. You're spending all that money when all you need is something like this. It does the dog no harm or anything else like that. Now, prong collar, there you go. This is what they call a prong collar. And this thing, she says, it digs in and it does whatever. You know, I can do that on my arm not hardly any marks. They are for dogs that pull like hell and don't listen to you. Now I've put these on, I haven't used it a lot, I've used it a couple of times on dogs that will not respond at all. This here is just a bit more than a chain choke collar. Um, and you know, you've got a little bit more and the dog, it just it just holds the neck a bit more and the dog goes, oh heck, what's going on here? So whereas he was like this all the time and not taking any notice of you, he's thinking, oh, hang on, hang on a minute, what's going on? Um, you use it the same way as you use the slip lead. It's loose, but when they start pulling, it's ah ah, ah ah. It's loose like that and ah ah, pull, loose, ah ah, pull, loose. If you want to see one of these in action, go and watch the Dog Daddy on YouTube. He's in America. He deals with vicious, untrainable dogs. Turns them round with a bloomin' prong collar. There you go. E-collar. I bought this years ago. You've got um, in this little kit here. You've got the collar, you've got the actual device that does it, and this is not just an e-collar. Ah, oh, is there any power in it? Yes. So, then you get your handset like this. Aerial in. And then you've 
on this here you've got settings. I don't know if you can see here, you've got settings. This is select your dog, you can go one or two dogs with this, you can get two collars and run two dogs. Here you have the sound. Hang on, it's gone off. It's probably low on battery. Uh, I'm just pairing up, is it? Goes to show how long since I've used it. There's no battery in the control in this box. <laughs> there you go. Anyway, what I've got to say about these is that with these here, well, hang on, it's it's in the back here, but it's not connected up. Goes to show how much I use this this thing. But it has its usages. Now, let's see if we're getting anywhere with this now. We need to pair it up. So, so this is what happens. What you do, you've got three settings. You've got a buzzer, if you can hear that. The second setting is this. Now that is the same as you know the little joke, you used to get them in Christmas crackers, the little joke thing used to go on your finger, you used to wind it up and you used to shake someone's hand and it used to go That's exactly the same. I can feel it. It does no harm, it just vibrates. Right, and then you've got the e-collar, which can't feel nothing just a little tickle there you go little tickle three little tickle four yeah, that's si stimulation, I'd say. Stimulation. Stimulation. This is six. And I'm, yeah, I got a little, yeah, yeah. A little, a little tickle. Right? I've never gone more than five. And this thing goes up to ten. Well, I'm not going to do it, but I've, I've never put a dog through ten. So, the... The, the thing is with the e-collar, it does three things and you should use all three things when you're training a dog. If you've got a dog that's not listening to you, off the lead or on, the, on a long leash and you're calling and you're going to come here and it's not listening or whatever, what you could do is first thing you could do is put the e-collar on and give it that. He'll probably take no notice of it, right, but then you pair it with that. So you go there. So if he doesn't like that, he'll respond, he'll get to know that the beep beep means that's coming. So if you can do the, the beep beep with the vibration and he gets it, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. And I've trained many dogs just like that to come around to listen to me and you can be walking them and their head is like this like this like this beep beep the the, the vibration and they go hello what's that what's that it, you know it's a different sensation from the tugging on the lead all the time then if that doesn't work the vibration you can go on to the stimulation electric i'm not going to say shock because it's not an electric shock it's a uh, stimulation on them and usually on three they turn around and look and think, what's going on? So you stop. So you go along. He does it again. You go beep, beep, shock. Oh, oh, I don't like that. And then usually after four times, all you've got to do is beep, beep. And he's, on your, on his, and, and he's with you. So all these things I've used over the years for certain dogs. I've not used them on my springers. I can do all the training I want 
off the lead, on a slip lead, no problem at all. So I've, that's why these things <laughs> don't get hardly used. But sometimes some people bring me a certain dog and they said, I've been to all the dog training, I've been to this woman, I've been to this bloke, I've done this, that and the other, and they can't do nothing for me. He's still the same. So I try him on the slip lead, I walk around. Sometimes I can get them with that. Certain training, change of direction, all this sort of carry on, that does work. And if it doesn't, I've got this as a backup. And if that don't work, I've got this as a backup. So to go out with all these people saying ban them is just ridiculous. Not all two dogs are the same. And this is what I'm saying. There's a place for all these to be used. Um, should they be used just for a dog trainer? Probably. Probably, because if you don't use them correctly, it, especially the e-collar, if you don't use it correctly, you can turn the dog away from you. It has to be used in a certain way, so as, you, you know, you get the attention of the dog. Um, and if you, do, if you use them like that, they're fine. Prong collars, prong collars as well. It's not a to use all the time. It's to get the dog listening to you and doing what you want it to do. Once you've got that and it's used to it, go back to the slip lead. You know, they're, they're just tools to a purpose. And so I think, well, um, e-collars, um, yeah, you don't know who's going to get them. Um, so maybe, you know, you apply to get one or something like that. And, you know, if you're a respectable person and a bit, had dogs all your life, maybe, you know, but um, there you go. I just thought I'd explain it all because I'm fed up with these people who think they know it all. And, um, you know, I'm not having a go at them. They fill up a gap, you know, um, and dearie me, you know, they're making businesses out of this. It's big money. Um, all these dog training classes and things and whatever. But I'm just saying that don't have a go at me, people like me, who have to deal with the dogs that you can't train for using certain products to get, get to the end with something. So, there you go. Uh, it's a bit of a, a, a variation from my normal videos. Um, but, and I haven't really done anything since the game fair. Um, we, we went to the game fair, it was very warm again. Um, I ran Tilly in one of the BS, BASC events. She was doing really well till the last um, trial. And it was on a, on a large paddock with certain bushes where to pick up. And there was one bush and there was one right at the back underneath a, a big tree in the shade. And she wasn't the only one. Couldn't get her to go back to that heap there and pick up that dummy. Real shame. I mean, she is nine now, but a real shame because she was doing really well up until that point. Um, and in the other um, crowd there that was on the game fair scurries, um, Reggie did really well. I think he was about a, a second off third place when we left in the evening. Um, so he did really well. But there are speed machines there that um, shoot up and down and back. And... Uh, yeah, he's not a speed machine. And one thing I noticed as well is that the judges uh, stop in the stopwatch when the dog comes over the line. Fine. But sometimes they're counting dogs and the dogs are dropping the dummy. There's no presentation to, to hand. Which to me, it doesn't matter what it is, but if it's a scurry connected to gun dog training, there's got to be the collection to hand. Some of these dogs were shooting up, shooting back, got over the line, dropped the dummy, blah, 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 send the dog again, comes back, drops the dummy. Well, to me, that shouldn't be counted, but they were. So come on, you scurry people. You're either going to divert away from, dog from a gun dog training into just a game, a speed game. You know, it all has to be one. Go out, come back. Yes, get over the line. But if the dog doesn't present the dummy to hand, then that the run should be void. There you go, that's me having a rant. Okay, folks, um, 
thanks a lot. I see that we're, we're over 900 subscribers. It'd be great to get to a thousand. God blimey. I didn't think I'd even get 10. So um, hope you like the video. I, it's just me explaining th this madness that's about. Um, and can we just get a level ground and leave everybody alone? You know, uh, some of us have to do things for, for, um, to get somewhere. Okay, folks, thank you very much. And don't forget, please like and subscribe.